Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of GLP Unscripted. I am Phenomenon producer and backup host for tonight's event. Tonight's guest speaker is Cliff High from the WebBot Project. You can read about Cliff in our pinned thread on the front page of godlikeproductions.com, or you can navigate your browser to halfpasthuman.com at your leisure. I ask that everyone be respectful and not mic up or talk over another. We will be taking member questions, and we will prompt you with a cue. This evening is Fox and Voice Chat Master of Ceremonies Moderator Rush. With that said, let's not waste any time. Let's welcome Cliff High to GLP. Take it away, Rush. And thank you, Finn. Hopefully, uh, everybody's hearing me uh, at a, a moderate volume uh, due to our little snafu. Um, I want to welcome Cliff, uh, as well as my co-host here, uh, Fox, who happens to be moderator at the. Uh, a, a site called Discussion Forum uh, of the WebBots, um, so we're glad to have him here as well. Um, as uh, Finn mentioned, uh, we'd like to get as many questions in as we can, but we'd like uh, Cliff to kind of take things and run with it uh, for this evening. So what we're going to do here uh, quickly is uh, um, uh, let uh, Cliff exactly what do you, uh, what's happening right now? Because as I was mentioning, uh, that you were just recently on coast to coast, and for some of us that haven't heard uh, uh, that particular uh, recent show, uh, would you like to kind of recap on that, or would you like to share with us uh, the most recent things that the web bots have uh, have you know come up with? Um, it, the choice is really up to you, and we'll take the questions here uh, very shortly. Uh, let's just get right into the immediacy data. I've noticed that uh, people are concerned with about silver and this kind of thing. Let me advise that my opinion is that if you own silver, you won't be selling it for a profit into paper, even though you will find that the paper value of silver escalates very rapidly. We think that it'll probably start taking off in the chaotic period of July. Uh, it most likely will find a uh, non-monetary trigger to get it to go, uh, such as uh, some geopolitical mess, whatever it is that, that takes us into that chaos period, will act as the trigger for the, the chaos in the silver as well. Even though at the moment, we're also getting all of that business about the, um, oh, the whistleblower on silver manipulation, the uh, tungsten, uh, uh, gold-wrapped tungsten bars, etc., we're going to get into a situation where some other event will kick off the uh, shift in, in acquisition of silver from uh, the Cognizanti down into the public at large. And like I say, we think it'll go July. For a lot of reasons, my monkey mind thought it would be January, and I was totally wrong on that. And now, a few months later, we're starting to see the echoes that we had anticipated earlier actually show up. So we're looking at these temporal echoes in the immediacy data, that, that have, are actually appearing now, we're able to validate the linguistics, and these are little blips over what will be a larger pattern that will appear in the end of July and go into August that will affect us all relative to currencies. And those currency issues will in turn trigger the gold and silver uh, panic to buy language that we've seen for some number of years. Uh, end of statement on that. Did you, uh, did you hear anything about the vault in Canada where they are virtually empty. Uh, you're referring to the uh, gold issue in Canada? I had heard about that, yes. Yeah, with silver, they were empty, no silver, and very little gold. The issue for us for silver has been building for a long time in the data. It was one of the first things I actually tumbled to in 1997, and it led to my purchase of, uh, of silver pre-2000. Uh, I had very little money, so I bought very little silver, but that's a side issue. The, the, the important point for us was the length of time that we started to see silver as a data item relative to the world events meant that the impact would be quite huge. And we, we eventually got to the point where the, the further we drilled down into the data relative to silver, it, it showed this kind of a pattern uh, that uh, myself and Igor and even George to a certain extent agreed existed within the data. And so the pattern that I'm going to describe is something that, that seems to be there to our monkey minds in the detail layer. And what it would suggest is a period of time where there is a recognition that the amount of silver available relative to both the industrial needs for it, the strategic needs for it, which we need to really discuss relative to the shadow world, but also the currency um, uh, need for it, 
will propel it to a new relationship with gold that will exceed its historical mean. And its historical mean was 12 to 1. So uh, 12 to 1, 15 to 1, there's some argument about that. I would go with the 12 to 1 figure. So if it exceeds that, it could even reach, on the extreme level of our data, parity, which would mean one ounce of silver could be traded equally for one ounce of gold, simply based on supply and demand. And everybody says, oh, you're an idiot. That, that'll never happen. And then I suggest to them that the one area we really need to look at is something that might spike its use uh, tremendously, and that is the, the need for it in anti-gravity and other um, uh, woo-woo technology uh, at a very strategic level. And it's also going to be consumed in that process, therefore making it even more valuable as we go forward uh, in the statement. Uh, Cliff, this is Rush again. Uh, something that, that uh, I happened to focus on uh, here recently was uh, something that the WebBots had, had approached was a, an audit from the Chinese uh, with the expenditures they have here in the U.S. Uh, is there something more you can elaborate on that one? Um, that's a tricky subject. Um, it gets into an area that brings us back to some of the machinations of the powers that be. And for certain strategic reasons, there's some of the stuff that we think we see going on linguistically there that I'd rather not delve into uh, publicly. We just want to let them happen. Um, however, the uh, non-sensitive area of that, if we were to just look at the currency component of it, the data again suggests that, well, well let me back up. Uh, right at the moment, ever since uh, March 3rd or 4th, We've left the, the, in March 3rd or 4th, we left the knee of the um, exponential curve on the building tension line and went nearly vertical. And from March 4th up until our current time, we've, we've shaded over to where we're almost vertical. And in our way of thinking on building tension, that means problems stacking in and on top of themselves. So you no sooner get dealt one set of problems than the next day you get another set of problems that compounds the previous set and so on, and it just seems not to end. And that this will keep on going until about July 8th. In that mix, there's a lot of data that suggests there's going to be international tensions rising relative to uh, drilling done by the Chinese, not for oil, but through bars. Now, bear in mind that the uh, mere fact that we're seeing the drilling word at an archetypical level, and, and that falls under the primary archetype of destroy in order to verify, um, it's very unusual for anybody to actually go to the trouble of drilling a uh, gold bar. When they, usually when they want to check for purity, they do what's known as a compression test. It's cheaper, it's, it's um, effective, it doesn't damage anything. So the drilling component relative to the uh, Chinese is very significant, and I think that'll also pop around July 8th, and they'll start uh, having to do something. Somebody's going to have to make good on this. That, that answers a lot of my question right there with uh, what you were able to share. Um, well, considering our time frame is a, is a bit short, um, I'd like to ask, uh, would you like to take some questions here out of the, out of the main uh, uh, text chat room? Yeah, sure. Let's go for it. What do we do? Does anyone have a question for Cliff? Fire away. I got one, Cliff. Are we freaking doomed or what? I got a question. Uh, I'd like to know a little bit about 2012, um, what the web bots are saying about the year 2012. It's a really complex issue because what we're actually seeing is uh, what is not being said. There's a distinct gap in the data that's very difficult for me to describe to people because the importance that I see in the linguistic shift is not easy to convey. But it it uh, doesn't augur well in my way of thinking. Either there's some kind of a huge electronic disruption or there's some level of disruption to the, the civilization as a whole. And of course, uh, my frame of mind with the sun and the weather and all the earthquakes and all this kind of thing, I, I think we're friggin' doomed because there's no, um, no data to, to back up any other conclusion at the moment, which is why I'm building the damn boat. <laughs> hey, Cliff, and thank you, sir. Cliff, I'd like to expand on the 2012. Uh, I have it written down here, uh, the data gap between 2012 and May 2013, where civilization, where civilization gets knocked back to a pre-electronic state due to solar activity. Any chance you might be able to expand on that? I can give you some idea. Um, our data starts trailing off rapidly. Bear in mind we use a, what's basically known as a scatter graph. Now, ours is a 
is a three-dimensional scatter graph in an IntelliCAD environment that is constructed of 60 um, units high by 60 units wide by 120 units deep. The depth is our time parameter. Within that scatter graph, we see the data start trailing off around March of 2012. And by that, I mean that the density of data points we have uh, chokes off the way that one might choke off a balloon. It, it narrows down very uh, rapidly. And then it fades out to virtually nothing by about July of the 2012. And then we see some small pickup into 2013. Now, this could all be an artifact of how we set this up to begin with. It's just that I would not expect it to behave as it does if it really were an artifact. So let me explain that. When we first set up the lexicon here and I started assigning numeric and uh, time values to words, maybe I screwed up back in 94, 95, and 